Securing web usage is one of the most important parts for any company. Controlling how your employees spend their time online, where they're allowed to surf to, for how long, what they're allowed to download, and even what they're allowed to send out of the company. All of that is part of an important web security policy. Now many tools make available a lot of options to you that most people don't understand how to use and so don't use them, leaving them largely unprotected. Our approach is to make it very easy to deploy powerful tools. And again, you can do this just by clicking a few places and easily see exactly what you have in place and then get the reporting you need to determine if you need to make changes or actually have a talk with some of your employees. If you go to web protection, you'll see the entire system can be turned on with one button. Turn it on and select which networks you want to protect. In this case, I've dragged our internal network in here, and then if I hit apply, it's going to start protecting our internal network topology. We have a whole bunch of different modes you can choose from, so the product can fit any network. You can deploy it in a standard mode, where you actually point your users to your web gateway. In transparent mode, which will basically attach sessions and drag the users into our web filtering, whether they like it or not. And we also have some options for full transparency as well if the UTM needs to exist in a more advanced network setup. Authentication-wise, if you've defined an Active Directory server or other types of authentication resources on the network, we can seamlessly tie into your users and they can use their names for the reporting, permissions, profiles, and other areas of web security. HTTPS and encrypted traffic is very important. Traditionally, this traffic was blind to the UTMs and their web security engines. Now with our product, SSL traffic can't hide any longer. We can choose to do URL filtering on the traffic itself, meaning that as people visit HTTPS sites, we can block them just by the site and the classification they're visiting. We can also go much deeper using the decrypt and scan option. This means we can actually tear apart the incoming encrypted sessions, check their contents to ensure that they're allowed and not full of malicious traffic, and then reassemble them for transport back to the user. This requires a couple of extra setup steps, but keeps you also much more protected and much more in-depth levels. If we want to make a policy to actually start configuring where people are allowed to go, what they're allowed to do, we click on the Policy tab and we can see that we have different abilities to make profiles and assignments. If you look at the filter actions, this is where we build a list of rules and permissions. So in this case, we've chosen to allow all content, and I've also chosen down below here that I want to block nudity sites, suspicious sites, and for example, we can choose to warn if they try to look at weapons sites. So these types of categories and their actions are available, and you can also customize them and be much more in-depth in the other areas of the web security settings. You can also look at websites themselves and choose to manually block or allow sites on an individual basis, and how files are downloaded, what types of extensions people can work with, what types of MIME types, and even warn them if the file they're downloading may or may not be something they want to continue doing. Now, Antivirus, Sophos is a very good antivirus company, and we offer both our engine as well as a secondary engine in case your policy dictates that you would like to scan all traffic using two independent, separate antivirus engines. When you're happy with your policy, just hit save and it's automatically applied to the individual users and groups that you've specified here. Now, if you look at the assignments, you can choose how you assign your actual settings and profiles to your users and their network space. And if you actually look at the users and groups involved, you can do it for an individual group like people who are sitting in the finance department or someone who's sitting on the guest wireless network. Coming back to the global tab, you'll also see we have a new device specific authentication feature. This allows you to apply individual policies to certain types of devices. So I could set one device policy for all of my Android devices and a totally separate policy for all of my iOS devices, no matter who's using them or where they are in the network. Once we've got our restrictions and our allowances in place and our users are operating under our level of security, we can also check right here from the web admin how effective certain things will be. Looking at our policy test tool, I can do something like this. Let's, for example, see how Joe is going to look when he visits playboy.com. This way, I don't actually have to log in as Joe. I just have to know kind of where he's sitting on the network. And I just hit test. And the system itself will show that this would actually be blocked because pornography is forbidden by the policy. This means I don't have to walk around, ask Joe to test something for me, or even worse, ask Joe for his password so I can test it myself. This keeps the security and allows me to also test all of my settings if I'm unsure if I've done things correctly. Now tying all of this together is the reporting. Down here under logging and reporting, all web activity is logged in great detail and then compiled for you in a report. Over here under available reports are several pre-compiled reports that already contain data ready to go. 
If I want to look at the top sites for the day, I can just click on sites and I can see that governments, domain.biz and television.net have all been quite popular. Clicking on them allows me to dive deeper and detect who went to these sites, where on the sites they actually went, how much traffic was spent, and what categories, for example, all of the classifications fell under. So if I click on something like users, I can then see all of the users here on this list have gone to television.net. If I then select John 22, I can actually see the URLs exactly on the television.net site that John 22 has visited. The whole system is reactive. And once I click around and find a view I like, I can actually click the button at the top right here to save that view so that later on I can pull it up with just a few clicks. We also offer some very interesting reports that allows you to audit your security policy. For example, search engine reporting shows you exactly what people have typed into common search engines like Google, Yahoo, and Bing. In this case, I can see that World Cup was searched for 12 times today. Clicking on it allows me to see which users it was, and in this case, Jane76 is the culprit.